Hi, I'm John Stacy, and I want to talk to you about novel writing, that particular form of novel writing known as show, don't tell. Oh, that's the most common advice you get about writing your books, isn't it? Uh, we're always told um, you don't want to just um, what, tell that somebody is nervous. We want to show that they are nervous. All right, well, think about this in your own writing. Imagine that you're trying to write a sentence in which uh, you want to show that uh, someone is uh, uh, down on his luck, that he's not doing too well. And uh, let's give him a name. Um, we'll call him Henry. All right, um, we could say, the first thing that I noticed about Henry when he walked into the room was his suit. Well, okay. Uh, the first thing I noticed when uh, Henry walked into the room was, was his suit. It, it's fine. But it's not really getting across the idea that he's, he's hard uh, down on his luck, is it? Okay, so let's shape that sentence by adding a couple of showing details. Okay, uh, the first thing I noticed about Henry when he walked into the room was his suit, comma, rumpled and frayed or frayed and rumpled is even better. Put the most important word uh, at the end. Okay, adding a couple of detail words, a couple of modifiers at the end of the sentence to shape it to show the thing that you're trying to put, uh, put across. Um, let's say that you're talking about a, uh, a tennis player and uh, you want to show that, uh, let me get an example here, um, Jimmy Connors, uh, I don't know if you remember him, um, but what you want to do in this sentence is to show that uh, Jimmy Connors is um, arrogant. Okay, so what do you do? You say, um, there was a touch of arrogance to Jimmy Connors when he moved around the court. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, what more? What would you add? There was a touch of arrogance to Jimmy Connors as he moved around the court. What couple of details would you add to the end of that sentence to show that he's arrogant? Uh, I've got a sample here, but maybe you think about it yourself for a second. Um, you ready? Okay, what's yours? Oh? Hmm. Well, that's actually pretty good. Um, try this one. Um, there was a touch of arrogance in the way Jimmy Connors moved around the tennis court. Dash. Love dashes before details. Um, his shoulders hunched, his eyes focused on himself. Oh, I like that. Isn't that great? Okay, uh, there was a touch of arrogance when Jimmy Connors moved around the court. Dash. Uh, his shoulders hunched, his eyes focused on himself. Now, what we're doing there is a particular writing device called the absolute. And what absolutes are, are when you um, have a subject at the beginning of the sentence and then you describe parts of the sentence. Um, let's see, uh, Mr. Stacy uh, stood in front of the camera, um, his, okay, part of Mr. Stacy, um, his eyes, his eyes flashing with intelligence, um, Smile. Smile's part of Mr. Stacy. Um, his smile gleaming with good humor, okay? Um, his hands, okay, part of Mr. Stacy. Uh, his hands uh, waving and gesticulating. Two um, ING words, but we've got the part of, uh, part of Mr. Stacy. His hands waving and gesticulating. Um, Wow, that makes quite a deal out of Mr. Stacy. Um, let's see, what else could we do? Um, the, um, the, ah, okay, here we go. The telephone. The te <laughs> this is my cell phone. Um, it's, uh, I, I, I've got no bars here. Uh, uh, the telephone, we need a part of the telephone. The telephone, um, um, the telephone, um, sat silent, or, okay, the telephone was just uh, in Mr. Stacy's hand, um, some part of the phone, it's bell silent, or the, um, the, uh, the dial unused. No, oh, those aren't very good. I don't like those at all. But, okay, here we go.
Uh, the lamp stood on the desk. Its bulb burnt out. Okay, adding details at the end in the form of an absolute. Um, they're one of a great many really good ways to add details to the ends of sentences to shape them. And that's probably the best, uh, best place to put your details too is after we already know what it is we're talking about. Theories here. Okay. Uh, the arrested woman was slammed against a wall. Okay. What are the parts of the woman we want to give details on? Okay. Uh, the arrested woman was slammed against a wall, her wrist handcuffed, her body frisked, her dignity lost. Well, of course, so those three, uh, three parts are given details at the end of the sentence. Um, the, uh, the firefighters, their faces lined with exhaustion. Firefighters, parts of firefighters, uh, their faces lined with exhaustion, trudge back to camp. Uh, removing from the full sentence a form of the verb be, you know, you know the be verbs such as is and are and was and were. Uh, the huge combine, its blade churning, uh, cut its way uh, steadily through the tall winter wheat. very, very powerful way to add details. It's only one way, of course. One way of constructing an absolute requires you to change the main verb into its ing form. Uh, you could change that to um, the evening grew more ominous. The breeze, a part of the evening, becoming gustier. White caps, uh, giving the lake a frothy, sinister appearance. A. Two sentences. Jimmy walked slowly to the corner of the playground. His face was streaked with tears. Now, uh, what's... Okay, let's figure this out. Um, Jimmy is the subject of, uh, of our sentence, right? The part of Jimmy we're going to deal with is face. So, Jimmy walks slowly to the corner of the playground. How can we change the second part here into an absolute? Uh, go ahead and try that. I'm waiting while you try that. Uh, Jimmy walks slowly to the corner of the playground. And how are you going to do it? Um, his face was streaked with tears. Oh, 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 I see what you did. That's right. That's good. Uh, Jimmy walked slowly to the corner of the playground, comma, his face streaked with tears. Good job. Okay, let's try, um, let's skip B and go down to C here. Love C. Okay, um, idea is to add details. So we've got two sentences. Um, the station wagon sped away. Um, the taillights disappeared into the distance. Now, what are you going to do to this one? Okay, go ahead and do it. Station wagon sped away. Okay, take the second one. Um, you could change the disappeared into disappearing. Or is that what you're doing? Yes. Okay, good job. Um, the station wagon sped away. Adding the details to the end. The taillights disappearing into the distance. Now, you can put the detail at the beginning of the sentence. It is an option. Uh, the taillights disappearing into the distance, comma, the station wagon sped away. Um, okay, uh, every night we could hear her singing. Uh, two, her high-pitched voice leaped and soared. Three, her high-pitched voice was unrestrained by any sense of melody or timing. Oh, you think I'd live next door to this person for a while? Um, okay, what are we going to do? Uh, go ahead and try it. Every night we could hear her singing. Her high-pitched voice leaped and soared. If you don't have a pencil in doing this, you're wasting your time, aren't you? Um, her high-pitched voice was unrestrained by any sense of melody or timing. Oh, I hear you getting a pencil and some paper out now. It's about time.